down or locked down and chained up from getting to what you know is possible. See, it would be different. It's not an insufficient desire if you don't know it doesn't exist. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But what insufficiency is, is not being able to move towards what you know exists. So you're chained. Amen. You're in bondage. Mm -hmm. And the way that you break that is through praise. Amen. Because in the praise is where you find the liberty. He cuts the chains because he said, well, if you can praise me without it. Mm. If you can offer me what I do and I haven't paid you for it yet. Then I will gladly release you to go get it because now you can be trusted with it. But if you're going to sit there like I owe you. Hallelujah. Then there's a good chance you ain't got nothing new coming. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm just talking about the fact that Jabez prayed with purpose. Mm -hmm. And he asked the Lord to guide him because uh, he took it one step further. Mm -hmm. he, he said, uh, praise is where, where God is. And if I could get to where God is, I get everything that's in God. Mm -hmm. Now that you're blessed and have been freed to grow uh, in God, God, I need you to guide me in the way that I should go. Teach me not to look for what can't be found in your hands. Uh -huh. mm. yes, yes. Amen. See, because part of the issue is that we have the common disease of being constant consumers. We want everything just because it's available. And the reality is everything ain't for everybody. And just because they can wear that color doesn't mean you can. <laughs> Contrary to popular opinion, one size does not fit all. <laughs> I ain't going to get and work that out. The reality is that what we need is to be satisfied in us. In your hand. Show me what you have for me. Don't let me go after anything that is not mine. Don't even allow me to taste for something that you haven't developed in me. Don't create in me a desire or have me chasing after anything that you ultimately will not be satisfied if I receive. Mm. Okay, I feel like I'm wearing on you. But he asked that the Lord would guide him because too many of us have opened ourselves up for something that can't satisfy us. Wow. Wow. Can, can I just ask you one question? Have you ever pursued something guided and it still didn't work? Come on. Mm. You put all of your efforts, your energies, and your attention into it only to find out that it really couldn't. And you double down on it then. You've gone through too much. You've done too. So now I guess I got to be this. And I got. No, you don't. Okay, y'all sit there. Y'all sit there. Some of us are grateful repenters. I'm so grateful that he did not allow me to keep what I got. Yes, right. Because I pursued it, I wanted it, I got it, and I found out, ew. <laughs> That's it? Please, if you give me another chance, I'll go back, guide me back. And take the taste out of my... Amen. Amen. See, because it ain't good enough. See... Uh, See, when you pray purposefully and you ask God to increase you and to grow you, it's very easy to start thinking that there are things that you want that aren't for you. So you have to ask God to guide you. Because when you start receiving success or accomplishing things, you think everything is for you. And, and after you start getting some of that everything... You need the Lord's hand to guide you away from the stuff that's not for you. See, it's, I'd love to be able to tell you that it's always easy discerning what's for you and what's not. What I need, Ebony, is the ability to repent from it and be free from it and once I discover that it's not. And not doing what so many people do in common and just settle. 
But I guess mm -hmm. I got it. I guess mm -hmm. I'm here. I guess that. Mm -hmm. Baby, if that's not your spouse. Because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. you didn't check with God in the first place. Mm -hmm. Ain't no need in keeping them. Mm -hmm. I ain't gonna get no help. We're we'll gonna have to edit that one out of tape. <laughs> because we bring God in on halftime, asking Him to bless the second half. When you didn't check to see what the plan was and practice the plan before you started the game. But God allows for U turns, so you gotta ask Him to guide you. Let me move to my last point. Jabez planned uh, by requesting that the Lord keep him so that he would be safe. Okay, can I recap just right quick before we close this thing out? He asked the Lord to bless him so that he would be secure. To grow him so that he would be satisfied. To guide him so that he would be sufficient. But then the last one was to keep him so that he would be safe. The, the text says, and keep me from harm so that I will be free from pain. Do you see that? Yeah. I'm still in the, in the text. In Luke's gospel, the 11th chapter, the Bible reads this way. When an evil spirit comes out of a man, it goes through arid places seeking rest but does not find it. Then it says, I will return to the house that I left. When it arrives, it finds the house swept clean and put in order. Then it goes and takes seven other spirits more wicked than itself, and they go to live there. And the final condition of the man is worse than the first. <laughs> Jabez planned for the throwback. J Jabez planned for, for the throwback. See, every plan must have a historical hazard plan. Can, can I say that again? Every plan must have a historical hazard plan. There, there's a saying that many of us are familiar with. If you don't know your history, you are bound or doomed to repeat it. See, see, once you get to the place of, of, of providence and prominence, of a promise that God has blessed you uh, to be in and he's grown you and his power is now guiding you, you need to ask him to keep you. Because many a fool have fallen because they got so high and lofty. And, 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 and one of the things that we have to be very clear on is that the enemy ain't got nothing but time. He will gladly yeah. allow your monkey tail to achieve and grow and expand and do things for God only to allow you to get so unpurposeful about planning on praying that you start praying prayers that have no purpose and you start seeking things that you ain't got no business Come on, seeking. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Wow. And, and, and can I take it one step further? I won't even blame it on you because, you know, God's guiding you. <laughs> so it's not even that you're seeking after it anymore. The things I used to do, I don't do anymore. And the places I used to go, I don't go anymore. But see, the reason why we have to ask God to keep us, the reason why Jabez had the hazard historical plan in place was that thing always seems to find you. Amen. Amen. See, it, it's, it's one thing that if you didn't have the guidance of God, uh, you wouldn't have gone back. Amen, Amen lights. Amen. If it wasn't for the hand of the Lord putting blockers in the way, your phone stopped working, or they just simply weren't home. <laughs> Sit there, I dare you, I'm coming for you. But, but, but now you got to, to, to handle when you're in your flow. Having them show up. Mm. See, it's one thing from you going seeking after them, but it's a whole other thing when they show up where you at. All right. mm. See, you, you, you got to ask God to keep you. Because you were on track. You were moving and growing and being blessed. And then all of a sudden, that thing showed up. That thing. That thing. <laughs> that thing. That thing. What 
Jabez understood that we need to know is that it's only the thing that can keep us from God's purpose. It's only that thing that has the power to undo all of the things that God is doing in your life. And the reason why is because we've spent so much time with that thing. That thing knows it's sit there. That thing knows you. That, that thing knows your patterns and your proclivities. And when it shows up, it can knock you completely off track. So if we don't ask God to keep us, if we aren't intentional about imparting a hazard plan, then we will find ourselves back to the place where we began. Jabez asked God to keep him from evil so that he would not be in trouble, so that harm uh, would not find its way producing in his life. I, what, what I love about this point, Darnell, is, is the fact that his request was to keep him from harm, not to keep him from going to where harm was. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, I love that, just small little nuance, because many of us think it's because I was intentional. No, it shows up. And when it shows up and it sits on the front row. <laughs> when it shows up at work. It knocked on your door into house. You didn't think it knew where you live. <laughs> you need God to keep you. So don't be bothered by interruptions or delays or even setbacks because the setbacks of the righteous are ordered by the Lord. And they could be what the Lord is using in order to give you a comeback because there was a set up down the street. See, see, when, when, when you are purpose about praying and you pray purposefully, mm -hmm. you ask God to keep you, which means that sometimes he's going to interrupt your plan okay. if you had one. Huh. And he's got to do that in order to make sure that that thing that knows you couldn't find you. All right. Thank you God. Yeah, you might have to go around the mountain, but it's better than having the mountain come down on you. What, 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 is, what, is, what is your dream? What, what is your vision? What is, what is your resolution? What are you going to do about it? What is your plan? Yeah. What, what, is, what is your plan? Are you planning on praying? What is the purpose of your prayers if you do plan to pray? The text said that God granted Jabez that which he requested. And history proved that uh, he was prosperous and successful in all of his undertakings, in his studies, in his worldly businesses, and even in his conflicts with the Canaanites. And because of this, the text says that he was more honorable than his brothers. He was no longer seen as an equal. Because he planned to pray, and he prayed purposefully, he was no longer seen like everybody else. Do you just want to be common? Is it, is it your desire just to maintain the status quo or keep things the way that it was or just simply use other people as your gauge? Or are you trying to get into the presence of God in order to find out the purpose for which you have been created? The challenge in our community today is still equality. Not access to it, but breaking free from it. We, we want everything in equal portion without equal effort and sacrifice and the sin of being the same is causing us to seek after stuff stuff that looks like success without it ever becoming significant to us right. wow. we, we, we separate using the same stuff which means we never really separate mm -hmm. so let me ask you a question what separates you from the sin of the same mm -hmm. what confidence is there that this time it's going to work. Well, that which separates us from the sea of sameness is the Son. His name is Jesus. Jesus Christ is God's plan that separates our lives so that we can live